three-year-old American Bulldog, Sasha, is putting everyone on guard. And two-year-old Mastiff, Digweed, has started putting up a fight. Stay-at-home dad, Daniel, can hardly keep up. I do get overwhelmed. But unbelievably, he wants to add more to the mix. I wanted to breed Sasha. By you breeding, you're just adding to the problem. Victoria will have to pull out all the stops. No, 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 don't come with excuses. And shock some sense into Daniel. <laughs> it really gives a reality check. Before this bullish battle ends in tragedy. No, oh, 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 Sasha. Oh, you have to step up and protect your children. <laughs> Victoria Stilwell has been training dogs in Great Britain and the USA for nearly 14 years. Today, she's on her way to meet the Miola Altman family and their bull-headed dogs. Before you make a decision to bring a dog into your family, you need to ensure that every member of the household is on board and that the dog is a good fit in your home. If you don't, you could end up with a divided household and an anxious and unconfident pet. My name is Daniel. I live here with my wife, Randy, my two dogs, Sasha and Digweed, and my stepson, Ethan, and my daughter, Chloe. I love my two dogs, but I can't trust them. I'm afraid someone will get bit. That's really my worst fear, that they're going to do something to hurt one of the kids. Back. I'm having a really tough time trying to figure out how to juggle the responsibilities with the kids and the responsibilities with the animals. Sasha, back. I feel like we've signed ourselves up for more than we can handle. <laughs> trying to raise a family and keep those dogs. Back, back, back. To help formulate her plans for training, Victoria will first spend a day observing the family and their dogs. Through the glass, I could see two very big dogs running for the door. Sasha, come here. Hello. Diggs. Hello. 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 Oh, beautiful. Dad could immediately Hello, see, wow, me. these owners have a lot on their hands. Hello, nice to meet you. I'm Daniel. Daniel, good to meet you. Hi, I'm Randy. Hello, nice to meet you. This is my daughter, Chloe. Hi, Chloe. And this is Ethan. Hi, Ethan. Hi, Hi sweetheart. <laughs> and this, oh. This is Sasha. Oh. And this is Digweed. Oh, Digweed. my gosh. Ah. Sasha, no, come here. OK, I see a problem. She got nice. jealous of him? Yes. yes. Sasha hasn't been happy since we adopted she Digweed. Does. She's very possessive of all the attention. <laughs> Yeah, and he's hiding there, hiding yeah. from her. She tries to bully him around, and she decides what he can and can't do. Okay. Sasha's domineering behavior towards Digweed hasn't stopped Randy's son, Ethan, from attempting some bullying of his own. This is a favorite game of theirs. He likes to bring a sword and pretend sword fight. And when she's had enough, she breaks out the growling. So they play this game quite often? Yes. I had such a tough time trying to hold my tongue while I saw Ethan prodding a sword at Sasha. I thought any minute now, Sasha's going to have a go at him. So Ethan, do you like your dogs? Yeah? Do they ever get really scary? Do they go? Well, Diggs doesn't. He just go ahead some bites. Oh, he does. Has he snapped at you before then? Okay. He bit me on the thumb. He bit you on the thumb? These dogs are displaying behaviors that are very concerning, especially around the children. Whoa, that scared me. <laughs> I see right there, that's him standing his ground. She's not backing off though, is she? No. What would you do to stop this? I'd just go grab their collars and okay. I'd accept, do, I, I'd do, pull do, Sasha. Do, I would like you to do it now. Sasha, come on. I was worried about the dogs having a fight in front of Ethan, so I had Daniel just take Sasha out into the garage. With the situation diffused for the moment, Victoria has a one-on-one -on -one with Daniel to find out a little more about Sasha's history. Is Sasha spayed? No, the breeder I got her from said that he had had a lot of demands for pups and that it would be really cool if I would one day return with her and breed her. Sasha hasn't been spayed because Daniel wants to breed her, and it drives me crazy. I love bully breeds, you know? I love the way they make me feel when I look at them. I love their protective nature. And one day, you know, if I could work through these challenges, I would love to start a, a bully breed rescue, you know? OK. Here is a guy who wants to breed his dog and add to the pet overpopulation problem. But I'm sure he doesn't see that. But also wants to start a bully breed rescue. Don't get it. How difficult is it for you to manage uh, Chloe and the dogs throughout the day? 
It's extremely demanding and very difficult. I've found that lately I've had to separate them. If they start to demonstrate behavior that, you know, puts anyone at risk, I put them in the garage. And it soon becomes apparent why the dogs need to be separated from the kids. Uh, no, oh, 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 Sasha. Oh, oh. Oh. And that's a good example of why I separate her now, even when she's in her high chair. OK, separate her now. You can take okay. her right out. Come on, take Sasha. Her right out. That's bad. When I saw Sasha growling at Chloe, that really, really worried me. It's a very serious situation when you've got a big, powerful dog growling at a baby. Daniel may be dealing with a scary situation inside, but outside, the dogs present another kind of danger. I couldn't get the door closed before the dogs were dragging Daniel down the driveway. Whoa, come on, this way. Goodness, I had to run to keep up with Daniel and the dogs because the dogs were pulling him so fast, and a couple of times I thought he was going to fall over. That's quite an exit. Yes, Ooh. yes. Now, I have him on the lead, which is about 15 feet out because he's the hardest to control. Right. Then I have, whoa, hold on. Then I have Sasha closer to me because she's usually the easiest. Whoa! I've seen a lot of very bad leash pulling in my time as a trainer, but this, this was off the charts. How many times then on an average week would you walk them? Maybe once on a Saturday, like when the family's home and I have the extra help. Mm -hmm. There's times I'll do it late at night when everyone's in bed. Okay. And if I can get one out the back and the other one doesn't know what's going on, then I'll shoot, you know, like digweed a lot of times. I'll take him down around the block because he tends to be the one that dashes out the door. Yeah. So I yeah. try to get him out. You know? If Diggs gets out when he mad dashes out, yeah. there's no catching him. Oh my goodness. <laughs> back inside, Victoria wants to find out how the dogs are affecting the rest of the family. How do you feel about the dogs? Most of the time I feel very frustrated with them overall because I don't trust what can happen if they start fighting. This is very typical because Diggs is getting close to him. She can't stand it. She gets very jealous. Yes. It was very interesting to see Sasha crawl up the side of the couch, over the back of the pillows, and then wheedle her way in between the couple. This is very typical. She's positioning herself in between us. And she would sleep in between us in the bed if I didn't have a problem with that. She would? Yes. What happens if you try to get her off now? Most of the time, she'll growl at me. I want to see what you do. OK, Sasha down. Sasha down. Sasha down. Sasha down. Down. <laughs> Very typical. Sasha kind of drives a wedge in between me and Daniel sometimes because of how protective she is of him. What happens if things don't change? I'm really close to the point where I just want them out of our house. The thought of Randy getting rid of the dogs makes me ill. There's a lot of tension in the house, tension between the dogs, tension between Randy and Daniel. There is a lot to sort out here, and I hope they're going to listen. Bully breeds don't transfer over very well to shelters. Coming up, Victoria gives Daniel and Randy a wake-up call. Victoria Stillwell has uncovered some worrying behavior in the Miola Altman's home. No, oh, oh, oh. Now it's time to sit down with Daniel and Randy to spell out the dangers and deliver some surprising news. Before I start working with dogs, they always have to have a full veterinary checkup. And unfortunately, what we found is that digweed is heartworm positive. Heartworm is an extremely dangerous disease. And left unchecked, it will kill a dog. The fact that digweed has heartworms scares me. It's also disappointing, you know, having had him on prevention. Fortunately, digweed's heartworm is actually a mild case which means he still can't have strenuous exercise, but we can do a little bit of training with him in the home. OK. Good. Now, with regards to bully breeds, they are extremely loyal dogs, and they can make fantastic house pets. But they're a very impulsive breed. So if you have a bully breed in your home, you have to know what you're doing with one, and you have to know what you're dealing with. Tell me about wanting to breed Sasha. Well, yeah, originally I wanted to breed Sasha to just, just one time, just to carry out her bloodline. I've had a lot of requests 
that if I did that to let people know because they want puppies from her. You can start your bully breed rescue with the puppies that Sasha's going to have because one of the biggest breeds of dogs that are put down in shelters every year are bully breeds. Mm. By you breeding Sasha, you're just adding to it. I think Victoria put the pieces together well for Daniel to see how creating more puppies would only add to these numbers of dogs that are going to be potentially put down. Now, digweed. You were irresponsible bringing digweed into this family. <laughs> Digweed is being bullied constantly. And then he gets to the point where he can't take it and he lashes out. And then they fight. Woo! I'm worried about the kids' safety when they're tangling up and making the loud noises. Okay. And, and that's our biggest concern. My biggest concern is not just that. It's the way you've allowed Ethan to play with Sasha. That is an absolute recipe for disaster. Chloe just reached out her hand at Sasha, and Sasha growled at her. No, oh, 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 Sasha. Oh. It's reached a point now where I do separate the dogs from the kids because it's just easier that way. You have to step up and protect your children. And I believe that when the dogs are out, Chloe's up in your arms. If she's down on the ground in any kind of way, even if she's in a high chair, the dogs are away. At the end of the day, we've got to come up with some sort of plan so yeah. that everybody can be successful in this house. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of work to do. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's we go. Are. OK, let's do it. Before she does anything else, Victoria brings Daniel and Randy to the county shelter so Daniel can see the reality of dog overpopulation and halt his plans for breeding Sasha. The county animal shelter takes in strays, owner surrenders, and abuse cases. The people in the shelter do what they can to find homes for the dogs that come into the shelter, but there are just too many animals coming in. There's not enough space, so they have to euthanize them. Basically here, I mean, you see we have two beautiful dogs. I mean, yeah. Yellow Labs, we have a Sharpay. The Sharpay was an owner surrender, so that was a case of somebody that probably bred a dog, thought that he gave it to a good home, and then you never know where the dog ends up. The right family doesn't come through with the right rescue group, probably won't make it out of the shelter. Seeing that the dogs and the, the long road that we first walked down was just disheartening. I don't know if it was more sad to see the puppies that were just coming into the world that, that were there or the older dogs who have less of a chance of being adopted. Bully breeds don't transfer over very well to shelters for the simple fact that for the most part, most of them are not dog social. We can't house as many because they take up more space. They take up an individual dog room that can house four dogs. Bully breeds do make up the bulk of our of our population. So when it comes down to the euthanasia sheet, they take a heavy hit. Just to kind of give you an, an, an idea, you know, this is this is today's euthanasia law. So you've got how many? 29. 29, and it's not even lunchtime. The bully breeds catch the brunt of it. Daniel was very much affected emotionally by seeing all of the dogs in all of the pens. But I'm not 100% convinced that now he's not going to breed Sasha. So I really need to show him the reality of what might happen to Sasha's puppies if he breeds her. Now, this is our cooler. This is where we do dispose of the animals that we euthanize on a weekly basis. Our staff is responsible for, for disposing of, of the animals in the cooler. Every week, we have to load up, and sometimes you when you're loading up, you may see a familiar face. The cooler just had a horrific smell. And it's a picture that a lot of people don't have of things that are at a shelter that are reality. When that cooler door opened, I could see the effect of people's irresponsibility and selfishness that was carried down and their animals ultimately had to pay for. It disgusted me. And just even here, this is part of the four million animals that are put down every year here in the United States. And Sasha's pups could have been one of them. Until people start spaying and neutering their pets and stop breeding their pets, there needs to be high kill shelters. If there weren't any shelters like this, dogs would be roaming around the streets. As concrete as it could be, I will absolutely not breed Sasha under, I mean, any reason whatsoever. If I ever did in the future want another animal, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm actually going to come here. Who, who would breed their animal after seeing this? Thank you. Up to you. Coming up, Daniel and Randy try to take back control. Okay, go. Move, move. Say enough. 
Enough. Don't touch her. Victoria has convinced Daniel to give up his plans for breeding his bullheaded American bulldog, Sasha. As concrete as it could be, I will absolutely not breed Sasha. Now, she wants to make sure the dogs and the kids can coexist in the house safely. I've got something for you, Daniel. Oh, okay. I think this is going to help you. Uh, oh, wow, thank you. Yes. Gates, gates, gates. Oh, okay. that is so nice. Now, I've got one here, mm -hmm. and I've also got one on the other side. One of the things that has me most concerned with this family is the safety of the children. But it's unfair that the dogs spend so much time in the garage. I want the dogs to feel more a part of the family, but I want the children to be safe too. So that's why I've introduced Baby Gates. You're going to call Sasha and Digweed, and as you go in, I want you to say in to the dogs, all okay. right? Sasha, Digweed. Na nicely. In. Sasha, Digweed. And walk in. in. Walk in with them. Come on, come in. Come on, Sasha. Come on, Diggs. Come on, in. Come on. Good, Good boy. Good night. Good girl. If the dogs see being in the kitchen as a positive thing, they're more likely to go in there. If you think the dogs are getting too crazy in here, and you need to give them some quiet, calm time, that's when you put them in the garage. I really hope the gates are going to be really useful for the family. I hope they allow the dogs to become more part of the family. It's going to keep the dogs safe. It's going to keep the kids safe. Good girl. Good boy. Good. But for the dogs to truly be successful in the house, they will need to learn some boundaries. I know you have a problem with Sasha being on the couch. Yes, you can see the results of dogs being on the couch, and I just don't like to look at that. And this is actually the better side of this cushion. Both sides of the cushion were torn up. No wonder Randy doesn't want the dogs on her couch. I'm going to back you up 100%. No more dogs on the couch. Sasha doesn't like it when someone forces her off the couch. She growls at them. Down. In order to stop that, I want to make getting off the couch rewarding for Sasha. To begin with, we're going to give her treats. So all I'm going to get you to do... <laughs> Good girl. That's it. Sasha off. Good girl. OK. Getting off the couch is a good thing, okay? OK? Not a bad thing. It's a good thing getting off the couch. Now it's Randy's turn. Point and say Sasha off. Sasha off. Good. Now when she's got everything off. OK. Sasha off. Good. Then say good girl. Good girl. Nice. I love the tone of voice, but I just want you to be a bit more direct with your body language. Randy has to be stronger with her hand signals so that Sasha understands what Randy's asking her to do. Tell her off much more direct with the finger. Sasha off. Good. I think I had a good response from Sasha, particularly with the treat. Maybe that'll improve our relationship. Good girl. With Sasha learning some boundaries inside the home, Victoria wants to take the training outdoors. The most important thing is that I want you to be able to walk your dogs, OK? Now, we're not doing any walking with Digweed because of the heartworm positive. All right. He needs to be kept quiet. What I witnessed on that dog walk was nothing short of insanity. I have, whoa, hold on. Then I have Sasha closer to me because she's usually the easiest. I want to give you a special harness. This is a harness where the dog is led by its center of gravity, which is the chest. Each time the dog pulls, the dog's body gets pulled round. With Sasha harnessed, they are ready to walk. When she walks well, I praise her. Pulls, I stop. Good girl. Good girl. See how she backed up? Yep. Thank you. Now we go to where you want to go. If she pulls me again, I stop. Sasha's a smart dog, because she learned really quickly. If I stopped, she had to back up. And only then did I walk ahead again. OK, I want you to take over this leash. OK. I want you now to really watch her and to give her encouragement. Yeah. And she's doing well. Good girl, Sasha. There you go, good. That's it. Okay, so good girl. girl and you carry good girl. On. But Sasha's not quite ready to relinquish control. You did exactly the right thing then. When she starts jumping up at you, you stop and you become completely boring. Come on. Nope. And yeah. that's what she likes to do is take control, remember? Yeah, yeah, you bet. She's taking control right now. Come on. But Daniel holds firm. After a while, Daniel got used to the training. Come on. 
good, and Sasha was walking next to him. It's the first time he's walked her since she was a puppy where he hasn't been dragged down the street. She's already not pulling me as bad. Yeah. The leash training I did with Victoria went exceptionally well. Now I have hope that I can take Sasha out into the public. Things may be going smoothly with Sasha one-on-one, -on -one, but together with Digweed, it's another story. I think they're mostly fighting over you. Sasha especially has a really big affinity for you. The dogs are fighting because Sasha gets jealous. Sasha gets very protective of her people. And when Digweed's around her people, she doesn't like it. Instead of trying to break the dogs up, screaming at them, I'm gonna ask you to say enough, to get up and just to walk. Walk away from where the dogs are. Let's see what they do. Okay. Okay? By taking yourself away from the dogs, the dogs learn that you going away is a bad consequence for negative behavior. Within seconds, Sasha's jealousy rears its ugly head. Okay, go, move, move, say enough. Enough. Don't touch her, don't touch her, that's it. Okay, come back and sit on the sofa. Tell him off. Off, Diggs, off. No, he's not gonna, no, well, you're gonna, you're gonna have a fight, you're gonna have a fight. That's it, go away, get up, and tell him off. 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 Good. Sit down on the sofa again. Now, you get up, say enough. Enough. Walk away. By walking away whenever Sasha growls, Back. Daniel sends a clear message that her behavior will not be rewarded. Sasha's so focused on Daniel that for her, Daniel walking away is a big deal. Enough. Good. Enough. Good. Again. Enough. And after he does it several more times, Sasha finally catches on. And now Digweed is nicely relaxed, very close in her presence. That's a really, really good sign. Yeah. The fact that the dogs are being so peaceful at the end totally blew me away, man. That was a complete shock. It was almost like magic. Coming up, with his life on the line. As those heartworms die, they can cause clots. He's got to be kept extremely quiet. Victoria puts the brakes on Digweed's door dashing. Victoria Stillwell has been helping Daniel and Randy gain control of their dogs. Okay, go, move, move, say enough. Enough. Don't touch her. Now it's time for Digweed to learn some restraint. So I want to show you just a simple way to come out. OK. This is going to be for you, Digweed. Learning to inhibit behavior is especially important in Digweed's case because for the next month, as soon as he starts the heart work treatment, any kind of exertion could potentially be extremely dangerous for him. Wait. Good boy. What I'm doing is I'm putting my hand down, but I'm not staring him full in the face. Yeah. Just saying, wait. OK. If he stays in one place, he's going to get rewarded for it. Wait. Open the door a little bit. Close the door. Good boy. Wait. Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm faster than you, buddy. Wait. It really didn't take me long to have the door wide open for Digweed not to run out. It was pretty impressive how quickly this dog learned. Very good, very good. Now Daniel takes over. So I'd like you to do this now, yeah. all right? I'm gonna give you a few treats. All right. Done. Wait. If you, if you feel he's too close to the yeah. door, you can back. back him away. Back. And when you back, just walk into him. Okay, back. Good, see back. he has to move his body, love Okay, it. wait. Wait. Good boy. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> Even though Daniel hasn't set boundaries for his dogs, when he does communicate with them, they listen to him. With Digweed listening to Daniel, Victoria wants Randy to try. No, no, you're not. But to make things harder, she will act as a guest at the door. I was starting to get nervous because I don't know that, that I would get the same response. <laughs> Wait. 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 Okay, he moved, so I go out again. Back. 
back. Wait. Wait. Good pup. See? Good job. You did it perfectly. It absolutely worked. It was great. I think you just need a bit more confidence. I do. I'm so scared to open that door. Your challenge is to teach Sasha this as well. And you do it one dog at a time. You begin to fade out the food. So they're now responding without the food. Then you put them together. When the family is working with each dog individually, they have to start to fade out the treats. Because if you put both dogs together and still use treats, Sasha gets very, very protective. She guards her resources and she will attack Digweed. So when I come back, you can have both dogs sitting here and waiting. Both the dogs waiting. It's going to be a big challenge, but I'm up for it. Digweed may be showing more self-control, but he's not the only one that needs to learn to play nice. All right, I want to show you something with the help of my friend here. OK? OK. I wanted to use a stuffed toy dog to work with Ethan so that I could show Ethan a little bit about what dogs like and what they don't like. Sometimes Sasha growls at you, doesn't she? Yes. Now, does she growl at you when you hug her? Sometimes. Yeah. Show me how you hug her on this dog. You go like that. OK. Now, do you know that dogs only hug each other when they want to fight? So when you, as a human being, go hug a dog, what do you think the dog's thinking? Maybe that um, you shouldn't be doing this. Yeah. What I want you to do is to stand still and get her to come up to you rather than you going into her space. And if you want to pet her, pet her on the neck here or on the back here. Now, I saw you when I first came here. You were playing with the sword and the shield. I feel like we always have to be around a supervisor. She didn't like it. So I think there has to be a rule. No more playing with Sasha with the sword and the shield, OK? I um, had a special time with Victoria. I am happy that Victoria came to work with our dogs. She um, is a really nice person. The risks have been reduced, but to maintain a safe household, Randy and Daniel will need to continue the training on their own. Keep practicing, Randy, with the off on the sofa. Be very careful when you're using food around any of them. Anytime you see Sasha starting to bully Digweed, you think there's going to be a fight, take charge by saying enough and walk away. And take Sasha out twice a day. Okay. While Sasha will be getting twice daily walks, Digweed will have to remain inactive while he's being treated for his heartworm. Most important, kids are safe. You know that. You've already put that rule into place. I think it's a great rule. Stick with it. Keep doing the wait at the door. You both can do it. See you Bye. Later. Bye. Daniel seems very optimistic, but I don't think he realizes just how much work this is going to be. If they want their dog's behavior to improve, though, they have to put in the time. Coming up, Daniel ignores Victoria's advice and all hell breaks loose. Enough! Victoria Stilwell has left the Miola Altman family for a few days to continue the training by themselves. See you again. Bye. Already, Sasha and Digweed are spending more time inside the house, and when Daniel wants them out of the way, he uses the in command to encourage them into the kitchen. Come on, you guys. Sasha, Digs. Hey, in. Good girl, Sasha. In. Good boy. I've been really impressed with the training since Victoria left. We have been able to give it more attention than I originally thought. The time and effort is also paying off in the living room and keeping the dogs off the sofa. Sasha, Sasha down. Sasha, Sasha off. I feel really good about the off training. I have a lot more control at getting the dogs to get off of the furniture now. Later in the week, Victoria checks in. I'm excited to see how Daniel, Randy, and Ethan have been doing with the training. This afternoon, Daniel has decided to let the dogs out of the kitchen for some family time. Hey, Tasha. Wait a minute, why is Chloe there? I told them that whenever the dogs are out, whether they're training or not, she shouldn't be there. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. Come on baby. When Digweed starts to get attention from Randy, Sasha's jealousy gets the better of her. Enough. Enough. 
Thankfully, Daniel quickly diffuses the situation with the enough command. This is wonderful. Sasha's come a really long way, and Daniel is doing a great job of keeping control of her. Later on, Ethan's home from school and ready to play. Where's Daniel and Randy? Ethan's only seven. They need to be reinforcing the correct way to play with Sasha. And while he's left the sword and shield behind, without supervision, Ethan forgets another piece of important advice. Remember, Ethan, you're not supposed to be hugging her. I think we're gonna have to come up with other ways for Ethan to play with Sasha. And Ethan's not the only one to forget Victoria's directions. All right, come on, guys. Despite Digweed's health problems, Daniel decides to take both dogs out for a walk. I'm really confused here. What is Digweed doing going out for a walk? I thought he should be on his heartworm treatment by now. Come on, Diggs. So far, the dogs are calm. Sasha, hey. But Daniel is Sit. the one getting irate. Sit. 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 What are you doing? Hey. Sit. 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 I don't know what Daniel's thinking. Sit. He's being very rough Daniel. with Sasha. And walking digweed with a heartworm condition is very, very risky. One thing Daniel has remembered back, is back, to teach Sasha back, the wait back, command back. at the door. Sasha, back, back, wait, wait, wait. Now he and Randy are working to get both dogs wait. waiting together. Good girl. But yet again, Daniel ignores Victoria's advice. I started incorporating treats into the training when they wouldn't listen to me, or I wouldn't get any response out of them, and I found that the food motivation never failed. And very quickly, Sasha's competitive nature starts to come out. Back, back. <laughs> Sasha! Daniel, you shouldn't be treating when you're working with both dogs. I'm not at all surprised Sasha started to fight. Enough! Enough! This is too much. Someone is going to get hurt. I'm on my way back. Victoria Stilwell is returning to the Miola Altman family to set a few things straight. All right, you guys, back, back, wait, wait. I hope they don't fight. Wait. Hello. Hey. Hi. Wait. Good boy, digger dudes. Okay. That was really impressive, but why are you using food? Oh, okay, well, yeah, I, I normally don't use food. I just did that as a special but reward. But I saw you thing. using food before, and, and, and that caused fights. This was a special occasion. I actually gave him special treats designated specifically for this moment. No, no, so. but I, no, 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 don't come yeah. with excuses. What I said to you was, I want you to train the dogs one by one. Which I did. And I want you to phase food out with each one of them so now they're not responding to anything with food, yeah. they're responding to your weight. When they're doing that, then you put them together, but do not use food okay. because that'll cause a fight. Yeah, I misunderstood that. Having put so much into training these dogs, it kind of shocked me at first with you know the whole way she responded to me giving my dogs treats. This is another thing. Chloe was out on her little bouncer. Come on, dude. What was Chloe doing with the two dogs in the room? Um, that's just how we, I mean, she was awake at the moment. What I had said to you is that whenever Chloe's on the ground, both dogs are out. Yeah, I'll, I'll never be able to have a dog out then because Chloe's down from the moment I get home. When there's just one dog out, I can do this. <laughs> you can do that. If you feel like you can cope with Chloe and a dog, then that's up to you. When are you going to start the heartworm treatment? Because Digweed shouldn't really be out walking. Well, uh, I'm about a month away from getting that done. I was surprised when I learned that Digweed isn't going to get the heartworm treatment probably for a month or two. That's Daniel's decision. But when he starts that, no exercise right. at all. Okay. What do you feel you need more help on? What really bothers me is her competitiveness. Yeah. Not wanting to share attention. Mm -hmm. So that's the next thing we're going to do is teach the dogs how to take turns for attention. Okay. Okay? The taking turns training is a really effective way to have both dogs in the room 
both dogs under control while one of the dogs is getting attention. I basically want you to get either dog on either side of the room sitting and waiting. Okay. okay? Sit. Good. Wait. Good. Wait. Sasha, sit. Sit. Wait. Wait. Digs back. Sit. Sit. Come on, buddy. Sit. Victoria's request is a tall order for Daniel. Up, up. Nope. Sasha. Sasha, enough. Sasha, come. Now, what she's, sit. what she's learning to do, she's just learning to tune you out. So it's your job to get her focus back onto you. Okay. So I'd like you to go get her. Okay. Just by the... But don't... I don't... I don't want you going... Whoop pulling her like that. You see, a lot of what I've seen in the handling is you get very irritable with her very, very quickly, and you're pulling her around and you're telling her, sit, 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 sit. 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 And then you're pressing her, your hand on her butt. This is all going to make this dog yeah. tune out of you even more. Okay, well, that doesn't happen normally. I don't get irritable with her. You, you can safely say to me 1,000%, before I came here, you never, ever, ever ever got irritable with your dog? No, I've gotten irritable with her, but I don't I don't get impatient with her and push her down and jerk her around like you make it sound. I don't do that. I see what I see. I saw how you were handling Sasha. You don't have to be defensive. You've come a long way. No one really likes to acknowledge their mistakes if they made them. I think the acceptance was the hardest part. And to prevent any further frustration, Victoria yeah. decides to start afresh with one dog at a time. Wait. Wait. Nice. Wait. Randy, you take over, you keep reinforcing the weight. Daniel, I'd like you to go and get Sasha. Now, make her sit. Sit, Sasha. Wait. This is both very good. Good. Keep him there, keep him in the weight. Okay. Now, I want you, Daniel, to go over to Sasha, give her a bit of attention, and say Sasha's turn. Okay. Okay? Sasha's turn and I want you to tell Digweed to wait. Wait, Digs. Okay, good. Sasha's turn. We're taking turns. I want you to tell her to wait. Wait, wait, <laughs> wait. Now go over to Digweed. Wait, Sasha. Wait. Say Digweed's turn. Digweed's turn. All right. <laughs> she can't bear to look. <laughs> yeah, she can't, can she? <laughs> Sasha didn't like Daniel giving Digweed attention. She actually turned her head away, in disgust almost. But she kept her place. Sasha's turn. With the dogs doing well, there is just one other person Hi. to get on board. I just wanted to have a little chat with you, OK? I bought this friend of mine to live with you. Would you like him to come live with you? There, he's yours. Now, there you go. Now, I'm giving you this gift because I want you to get all of your hugs out on the toy and not on Sasha. Victoria gave me a dinosaur because she doesn't want me to get in a fight with Sasha. Sasha loves you, okay? And there's no doubt about that, but sometimes she does growl at you. I don't want that growl to ever become a bite. Ethan promised me that he wouldn't hug Sasha and he wouldn't play swords, but at the end of the day, he's a seven-year-old kid. It's up to the adults in the household to make sure that he keeps his promise. Ethan still has things he needs to work on, and it takes a lot of reminders with that, but hopefully we're gonna continue to move in the right direction. When I first came here, I saw that there were a lot of problems. And Randy, it does take quite a lot of effort to put the time in, which you've done. Your dogs are gonna thank you. Ethan, you keep on getting your hogs out on your dinosaur and not on Sasha, all right? And Daniel, you have made amazing strides. It makes me feel good that Victoria pointed out the good things that have happened and all that right, we are making guys. progress. Bye. What Victoria did was give me tools to help create a more peaceful environment, a more safe environment, a more harmonious environment. I don't know what you can do differently. It's not easy training two big rambunctious dogs like Sasha and Digby, but I think Daniel and Randy have done a really, really good job. If they continue, they are going to reap the rewards of their success. Since Victoria's been here, it's so much more peaceful and it's just a lot happier. Wait. 
I feel like our house is much safer now for our own children and also for visitors. Wait, digweed soon. Sasha is not pushing digs around as much as she used to, which is a miracle. I am having um, a lot of fun with Sasha playing in the backyard. We are really good friends. Good boy, Diggs. The walking's going really good. I'm able to get them out a couple times a day. They both seem to be acting a lot more calm in the house, which makes everything a lot more peaceful. I can definitely say that Sasha and I are closer now. I do give her individual attention, and I do feel like she respects me more now. And Unfortunately, vet bills are really expensive, and so it's been a process to accumulate the funds we need, but we're almost there. Thanks for watching. If you love It's Me or the Dog and want more dog training tips and tricks, visit my official site, Positively.com. And if you're interested in learning more about becoming a dog trainer, check out the Victoria Stillwell Academy. Links to both sites are in the description. I'll see you online.